Hey guys, what's going on? It's Quad here, and today I'm going to bring you some Lawbreakers gameplay. So this is the very first time that I post a gameplay on this channel, so I'm just going to give you guys a quick little breakdown. Lawbreakers is basically a mix between Overwatch, Call of Duty, Halo, I've heard references to Quake and Team Fortress 2 as well, and I haven't played those games, but the first three I have either watched a good bit, which is with Overwatch, I've actually never played it myself, but I have watched Overwatch a good bit to where I know a good bit about the game, at least like more than the average person. And then I also think that it does have some aspects to it that are very similar to both Call of Duty and Halo. So first off, as you can see here, I am playing with the character Gunslinger. You Overwatch fans probably think that he looks very similar to the character Tracer and all of my friends that have played Overwatch along with playing Lawbreakers have agreed with that. And basically Gunslinger has two pistols, one in his left hand that is more of a three round burst machine pistol and then more of a revolver in his right hand. And basically what Gunslinger is able to do is just run all over the map, you get a boost jump or an FTL like jump for you Call of Duty, Black Ops 3 and Infinite Warfare players out there as you can see me using here where I'm just jumping around the map. It's really useful to be able to move around really quickly, but you also do have heavy fire with both of the pistols equipped. So it's a pretty balanced character more than anything. Within Lawbreakers, there are several characters and some of them are a lot bigger and bulkier and they deal a lot more damage and take a lot more damage, but they aren't able to move as quickly. And there's also some that are able to move very quickly and can only kill you maybe in close range or only able to kill you after dealing a large amount of damage to you. So within the balance of the game, I would say that Gunslinger is very well in between. Honestly, I've heard so many different characters being overpowered according to different people. And honestly, I think that the game's pretty well balanced, but that's just me personally. I haven't been playing it that much. This is only my second day on here, and I did play one day of the beta, but I only got to play a couple games on the beta. But anyways, the characters are just very different in their own separate ways, and I think all of them are useful. So personally right now, I've mainly been playing with Gunslinger, but I'm thinking about possibly doing a series where I go through all the different characters, point out what all of their uh, strengths are, point out what all their weaknesses are, all of their abilities, stuff of that nature. And I'll just, obviously it'll help me out by just being able to get to play with all the different characters, even if I'm not going to be using them, just getting to know like what the characters can do. So if I see that character going up against me, I can try to adjust my play style according to that. And also I might be able to find a character that I prefer over Gunslinger, but right now Gunslinger has been amazing for me and honestly, it's my personal favorite character, my friend Bpug, who I did try making a video earlier with, but I had some technical difficulties with the Elgato recording software where we weren't able to get our voices properly picked up. So I make sure that I get into contact with him again and we can bring you guys another video, but he plays Wraith for the most part, which is a character that has a pistol and more like a tactical knife if you want to call it that and it's able to run around there and you can do like a little boost jumps but it's not as big of a boost jump as Gunslinger has and Bpug really likes Wraith a lot more than Gunslinger so it really just is a matter of preference and how your playstyle adjusts to each one of the characters. Personally I feel like Gunslinger is one of the characters that most people will go towards because on the main cover of the game it's the character that's right there. When you first go to select your character it is the one right in the middle so I feel like a lot of people are going to be playing Gunslinger which might be a downside especially once competitive play comes around if it ends up coming to that. There are no guarantees but if competitive play comes around and you can only have one character of each on your team that would be a problem if I'm going up with a lot of other gunslingers on my team and I'm not able to run my main character because I really haven't ran any of the other ones. So it definitely would be good for me personally and for you guys as well to just be able to go through all the different characters. So I mentioned it briefly but if you guys do want to see that let me know down in the comments below if you want to see me do a full series through all the different characters. I already have some gameplay saved up. This one is a gameplay, it's obviously pre-recorded if you guys can't tell that already. It's a gameplay where I'm able to stack up a whole ton of kills and you guys will find out what happens towards the end. I'm not going to give you any spoilers, it is a real good gameplay. It comes right down to the wire, I'll say that much. And I also have several other gameplays that I will be showing you guys in the future. I already have one save that if I do the series that I will be using this gameplay for sure for the Gunslinger character. So jumping into the gameplay a little bit further, as you guys can tell with this game mode, it is a lot like the game mode uplink in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. 
And if you guys did not know, I'm sure most of you did if you're brand new to this game, but there actually is a different game mode within Lawbreakers that's called Uplake, but it's it's similar, but it's not really the same thing. This game mode is called Blitzball. There's a ball in the middle of the map. You run over, grab it, you go and carry it over to your home base. I'm not completely sure. I'll have to look into the controls because obviously I'm still pretty new to the game. I'm not sure if you can throw the ball at all or if it just dies with you as you die just like it was with capture the flag back in the old call of duties so i'm not completely sure how that works but basically you just run around the map you try to go and score it on the other side if you are able to reach eight goals before the time expires you win if the time expires and the teams are tied up i'm not exactly sure how that works out because i haven't experienced that yet but i would assume that it just gives you a draw i'm not completely sure on that but I'll briefly go into Uplink a little bit also. Uplink is basically the same thing, but what you want to do is you go and grab the satellite from the middle and you take it back to your base instead of taking it to the other base. And then it has a timer where it counts down. You have to have it stay there for a certain amount of time until it charges all the way up and then it has a timer. And then you get the point and then it's first one to three for that. So that's the difference between Uplink on Infinite Warfare and Uplink in Lawbreakers. And for this game, I'm not sure how many different game modes and maps there are because there's been new maps that I haven't even seen yet and there are possibly new game modes that I haven't got to see yet so as I play it more I will be showing you guys that. But if you guys were not aware with Lawbreakers if you are searching for a game it only lets you search into quick game and it just randomly picks a game mode for you. You aren't able to pick the game mode or the map like you are able to do with other games. So that's one downside, but also it can be viewed as an upside because you get to possibly just, you get to mix it up. If you are like one of those people that really prefers to stick with one game mode, that obviously is a downside for you, but I don't think it's that bad of a point. So let me know what you guys think about that. If you like that, if you dislike that, I'm sure that there is a possibility that they will add that into the game along with the possibility of having a competitive game mode as i briefly mentioned a little bit earlier i think that i'll have a competitive game mode at some point very similar to overwatch where you are able to have one character per team and you're not able to have any duplicates and stuff like that and you are able to have a ladder system just like overwatch just like counter-strike and other games of that nature where you have a reason to play other than just simply leveling up and you are able to actually get your rank up and show that you truly are better than someone and have it not just be based on how much you play the game, which obviously is a factor for just leveling up. So I briefly covered the characteristics of Gunslinger a little bit before, but I realized that I didn't jump into the special abilities that Gunslinger has, and that is, first off, I did mention how it has an FTL jump like characteristic and you get that by pressing the left bumper by default you can change the controls to however you want them but that's the default and if you want to have the boost jump you just press x or double press x it depends on if you are in the gravity zone or the no gravity zone and you also have a throwing knife where if you throw it it is able to damage people but if you don't hit anyone with it or you do hit anyone with it and there's other people within a range it will show everyone that is within the range of it with a little red overlay on them and then it fades away after a few seconds and this is very similar to one of the characters in black ops 3 and i believe it is also an infinite warfare i can't remember the exact name but i'm sorry about that but that is another aspect where i'm saying it's similar to call of duty and obviously is it's more similar i would say to black ops 3 and infinite warfare but there definitely are other characteristics with the game that just match up with other games of call of duty now that I mentioned Call of Duty some, I will also say some of the other playlists there are. There is one that is very similar to Hardpoint where it just has a moving point to capture that goes all around the map it rotates. So it is really, really similar to Hardpoint. And there's also a game mode which is similar to Domination but less so than the Hardpoint example. And that is where you start out where it's exactly like Domination. You go and capture the point but then once it's captured it is locked until all the points are captured and then it takes about 10 to 15 seconds and then they unlock and you get one point for each capture of a flag so this is a pretty interesting way to go around it it has it to where you have to actually like stay on the flag and you can't like hold the flag down without actually being on it and you don't get any credit 
added on to it for when you aren't actually on the flag. So for example, if you were to rush to the other team's flag and you are able to capture it, you have to stay there and wait for it to come back and capture it again if you want to maintain control of that. Otherwise the team will just flood in there right out of their spawn. And it's not really like Domination where you can just have one person stay there and hold it down for the entire team and you are still getting points even when there's nobody there. So that's definitely one difference about it. And another thing, this is a little bit less important, but it still is a part of the game and there are two teams. There are always the same two teams and they are the Law and they are the Breakers. It's obviously a play on the name, but I think it's, I think it's fine. It's not really cheesy or anything like that. And it basically just has people that are like the law, the cops, and people that are the breakers, the lawbreakers, the bad guys. And so I think that's a pretty cool spin on things. And basically whenever you are a certain character on one of the teams, you are always going to be that character. And you can unlock certain skins, certain weapon skins, and stuff of that nature for those characters. And if you guys didn't see my last upload about lawbreakers... You can, if you have Twitch Prime right now, you can redeem a loot pack on Lawbreakers where you are able to get some Twitch themed stuff. It can give you a Kappa emblem. It can give you some purple gear for your characters and for your weapon skins. So I personally think it's a pretty cool way to utilize your Twitch Prime subscription. I personally only got Twitch Prime because I got Amazon Prime for the Amazon Prime Day deals that they had. And that is how I got my Elgato and my Blue Yeti that I'm using for this video right now. And so then I was able to subscribe to one of my pretty good friends and one of my long time like viewed channels on Twitch that I've always wanted to subscribe to and that's Ryan Galak. And so that's definitely something that I want to do for a while and getting Twitch Prime or Amazon Prime, whatever you want to refer to as, allowed me to do that. And this was just a bonus on top of it. So I mean, why wouldn't I want to do this? I know on Overwatch they let you get like loot boxes where you can get random stuff. And that's cool, but this is also just like unique stuff that you can get. I'm not exactly sure how it works for Overwatch, so don't take my word for that because I might be completely wrong there. But just based off of what I read about it, that's what it at least seems like. But anyways, that's going to be it for me. I think I've talked about this enough. I don't want to just keep on rambling on and on about this. I'll just split it up into more detailed parts as it goes on. And I hope that you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please hit that like button. If you want to see more videos from me, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out. I'm really trying to get back on that YouTube grind since I'm not really able to stream that much right now. But once I do get my streams back up and running, fingers crossed that that can't happen. I'm not planning on all of a sudden just neglecting my YouTube channel. I still want to just keep this going as much as possible. And you guys just helping me out by sharing it as much as possible it just helps me out tremendously and so if you guys do want to see me live stream when that does come back up make sure that you go follow me on twitch it is down in the description below and it is in the overlay above and also make sure that you go and follow me on twitter if you use twitter i just post about everything that goes on including uploads including live streams and just everything else that goes on with me so if you guys want to stay up to date with that you can go ahead and make sure that you follow me on twitter and anyways, that's going to be it. I'm going to let the gameplay go out a little bit here. There's still going to be a little bit left over, but I hope that you guys did enjoy this video. This has been Quad, and I'll see you guys later.